I need to get this haircut thing figured out, man. This is this is rough. It's April. It's warm. It's sunny, and you want to go outside and spend some nice quality time with your friends. You're excited to frolic around like you're Maria from The Sound of Music. Well, you can't. Surprise! The world is falling apart around you and you're stuck inside with your family, having watched Frozen 2 for the ninth time with your younger siblings. Us Christians know that Jesus said we would encounter trials and tribulations, so none of this should really surprise us, right? But many of us have been thrown off by what's been happening around us. Side note, if you don't know how to handle change, then you are in for some fun while following Jesus. Anyways, I mean, after your third hour of TikTok videos, don't you think you should read Philemon or something? I mean, it's Philemon. It's like a four minute read. Open up your Bible. Now, I know that in this time, I haven't made all the right decisions uh, and how to spend my time wisely. But I want us as the church to take a step back and look at how we're handling this coronavirus and ask ourselves, are we really advancing the gospel? Are we praying for creativity and inspiration from God on how to lovingly serve the world around us and be that shining light that it so desperately needs? When this virus dies out, do you really think things will go back to normal? I don't. The emotional, spiritual, and psychological effects that this is going to have is going to impact every country, culture, and people group. And we need to be the forerunners and adapt to what is going on around us. I don't mean compromise on the gospel. I don't mean compromise on doctrine. I don't mean compromise on how we love. I mean, look at how the world is changing around us and pray for radical new ways to love and adapt to the change. We are already playing catch up as the church and unless we do something now, we are going to be catching up even more and we can't afford to do that as the church. With that being said, I wanna go through a few things that I've had on my heart and I hope they resonate with you. Number one, Gen Y and Gen Z need to realize that we are up to bat. We are being pushed to the front lines way faster than we thought we would, and we need to mature at the same rate, if not faster. Let's be honest, this virus isn't going to affect the vast majority of us personally, because it generally affects people that are older or have compromised immune systems. Because of that, we need to step up and fill the holes that might be left by people that are struggling personally with this virus. And even when this virus dies out, and I'm praying that God does that way faster than we even can imagine, but even when it dies out, like I said, the psychological impacts that this is going to have are going to be detrimental. Let's rise up and fill those gaps. Let's get off of our smartphones and like Jason Beard has been saying in some of these lectures for all you Christ for the Nation students, make moves and not excuses. Number two, get your head out of your apps. Look, I know telling you this through a YouTube video is kind of counterproductive for me, especially for my view count, but we need to take a step back and use this time to really ask God, what is he trying to do in us and through us? Look, I know we aren't meeting in our churches. I know our schools are closed. I know your Bible study can't meet, but we must build ourselves up in the spirit of God and come out of this time with a more intimate knowledge of who Jesus is. I get it, it's hard. I'm struggling with keeping up my passion for the Lord. But when we start backing down because it gets hard, the enemy gets what he wants. He wants nothing more than for us to fritter our time away by doing mindless tasks, playing brain zapping games, watching your 13th season of The Lion King or The Tiger King or whatever that Netflix show is. I just sound like a really old person. <laughs> we need to get prayed up and pursue Jesus. He is the source of our joy, confidence, and power. He is the freedom that we need. Number three. Your life is not over. I had to move 800 miles back home almost two months before I thought I would have to. That was not fun. I miss all my friends. I don't feel like being positive every day. In fact, seven days out of seven, I am battling my flesh. And I am 
fighting the lies of the enemy with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the truth that is in me, that is Jesus. I have good news for you and me. 2 Corinthians 12.10 says, That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Guys, God's power is made perfect in our weakness. Perfect. These unforeseen changes cannot and will not stop us as long as we let God be God and do what he needs to do in us. Look at what is happening from the perspective of God. He is not worried looking down and saying, Oh, I sure hope Timmy figures out what to do now that he can't worship me with 5,999 other of my children. No, he is saying, take up your cross and follow me. Keep walking and I'll be there every step of the way. Guys, I want to end this with prayer. That we all start to yearn for Jesus' heart more and more during this time. That he continues to reveal the next step he wants us all to take. That he highlights what he's already shown us so that we do what we need to do. I want to hear your thoughts, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you all. I miss you all. And I appreciate the support on these videos. I really do. This is not something that I'm just going to do off the cuff on a random time. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to use this platform, build up my editing prowess, whatever you want to call it, prowess. And I'm going to start a ministry. I'm still working out some of the kinks, but it's going to it's going to start as an online ministry and it's going to focus on who we are now that we are in Christ and one with Christ. It's going to focus on being whole and what that looks like, what it looks like to no longer be broken. And honestly, I'm really excited about it. Please comment any perspectives that you guys have on how we can leverage this time and spread the gospel. Please comment your perspective on how we can utilize this time to spread the gospel and build the kingdom of God. I love you guys all very much. I'm praying for you. And remember, God's reality is reality. Yours is not. <laughs>